Testing one, two, three. Great. Okay, good, good morning all. Uh, this is Judge Evans. We're here this morning on the minor guardianship docket. Appreciate everybody's patience. Sorry for starting a little bit late. Um, so just a friendly reminder as we go through the proceedings here today, if you'd uh, please keep your phones <laughs> muted so uh, we don't hear little dogs barking in the background. Oh, <laughs> I just got trouble with the dog barking. I didn't get in I trouble. Just a, just a friendly reminder, just to make sure your phone is muted uh, while your case is not being it discussed. Is my old neighbor. Come so, on, say out. So Heather, could you go ahead and mute your phone, please? Okay. All right. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and just uh, call the cases. I, I, I try to uh, in the try to go to those cases in which will be take shorter time, take those first, and those that are more involved in will take uh, additional time or, or longer periods of time to take those near the end. Uh, there's an indication on the, the Zoom chat. Uh, there is um, here for presentation setting over any argument for one week by agreement on the guardianship of Birch. So that's kind of what I'm looking at uh, for information related to cases that will take a it's indicated it'll probably be a short period of time. So let's just go ahead and call that one now. It's the guardianship of Dalen Birch, which is cause number 23420908. Um, I, I show that Ms. Day is present as the guardian ad litem. Ms. Winkles is present as counsel for uh, the minor, I believe, Dalen. And then- That's Mr. correct, John. Great, thank you. And Mr. Esau is present representing, I read your name, but I- didn't put a notation of the connection. So if you could remind me of that connection. Uh, Mr. David Birch is my client, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And is is Mr. Birch here today on the line with us? Just want to recognize him if he is. I just spoke with him on the phone and I assumed he was, or he, he told me he was. So I'm not sure. I don't see him. So Okay. All right. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Fair enough. Um, and let's see. One moment. Okay, um, and so it looks like we're there was a proposed order that was submitted by Ms. Winkles on an order on emergency guardianship on uh, that, uh, and also restraining order related to that. So let me ask if Norleen Moxley is present. Norleen Moxley, are you here? If you are, please unmute, state your name. Okay, no response heard. Uh, and Kristen Kearney is present. Um, Ms. Kearney, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. So, Ms. Winkles, uh, you submitted that proposed order. Um, Ms. Day, do you have any uh, objection to that? Mr. Esau, do you have any objection to that? I don't have any objection to setting it over for a week. I did want to note that I don't see any sealed documents that would have included the um, required UA testing that needed to be done. So, I don't know where we're at with that, if that's going to also be set over. Okay, thank you. Mr. Esau? I don't have any objection to the entry except for one uh, typo, which I've notified Ms. Winkles about. And uh, other than that, um, we can enter that order today if the court wishes to do so. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if the set over is for other things like the drug issue, drug testing issue or what. So, um, but yeah, I have no objection to the order. So, Ms. Day, was that your, your so principal motivation for setting it over was the, to get information related to the SUD testing? Well, I, I agreed because there was some talk that there may be an agreement coming, but father was ordered to do a UA within five days of the last hearing, which would have been, should have been received by uh, the 27th or the 28th of June. That has not been accomplished that I can see. It hasn't been provided or filed. So I just wanted to make the court aware of that. I don't object to the set over, but that has not happened. And does that uh, does that have bearing on the proposed order? It was supposed to be contingent upon visitation with the child. Mm -hmm. And Your Honor, if I may, the proposed order um, is for has the uh, order in it for the drug testing for all the parties essentially. And um, my understanding is none of it's been done. Um, the reason I requested a set over is purely because my client being 12 years old, it's hard to get a hold of her. She's in Vancouver. 
Um, and so for the next hearing, which was a review, I asked to set it over with the understanding that everybody was still going to get drug tested. I'm hoping that's entered by next week. That That's my hope. Um, however, the restraining order and the order should be entered. And that way there's no confusion that everybody needs to go get a UA done. Um, and that's what I'm requesting is that everybody go as if the oral order is valid um, and that we just enter the orders today and that they filed them as, as they were ordered to do in the last year. And Ms. Winkles, your proposed order is talking about drug testing via UA on the following individuals, uh, Kristen Kearney, David Birch, and also the child. That's correct. Those, so, okay. that's correct. Um, this is Kristen Kearney. I was, but me and David were both supposed to take UAs. Either, no one has reached out to us where to go to do that. That's consistent, that's consistent. with what my client says too, Your Honor. Yeah, nobody has reached out to us. Go to any drug testing facility. Usually, you guys somewhere, and you like go. Hey, we need you to go I, here. I called places, and they said that it had to be uh, the person had to call them. It was the DSHS office, and they said that even if I got a UA, that it wouldn't be valid through the court if it wasn't through you guys. Same. And Your Honor, if I could just uh, state performance, occupational health, and uh, long view, I'm not sure if that will work. Uh, they're the cheapest in the area that I know. You can do same day walk in. Um, the UAs are inexpensive in comparison to everywhere else. What's it called? Performance, occupational health. And that's consistent with my understanding. And performance, occupational health will send the results directly to me to be filed so okay. that there's no chance of tampering. Um, with the written result. Okay. So does does that help, um, Ms. Kearney? Yeah, yeah, just because me and Mr. Birch were both uh, wondering. And yeah, we were, I'm not sure, I haven't talked to David um, like recently, but yeah, we were working towards coming to some sort of like agreement or whatever with the with the guardianship. Okay. Um, and, and Mr. Birch, does, does, that, does that help you to know where you can get that test done? Uh, a little bit. Is that here in Longview? It is apparently. Yes. Your Honor, I will email Mr. Birch with the information, the phone number, and the address today. Okay. Um, my uh, email has changed. I got a different email. My phone got broke over the weekend. Okay. Um, can I still the same phone number? I can give you a call when we're done here. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. That's what I'll do. And Kristen, you would need to take Daylin. Both of you go and get those tests done immediately yeah absolutely um would monday be a good day well daylin already has a ua scheduled so is she needing to do two uas because no, she's she, she's doing one at my office so that's oh, why okay. Still to the office. okay 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 so look looking at the proposed order the the order um you know, the in relevant part under uh, paragraph 19, it says that the parties are to submit to a 12-panel a, a test within five days from the date of this hearing. Um, and is the hearing, if, I'm just looking to see if the order references a specific date in which the hearing was held. The hearing it was on the 8th. Right. June, it should be June on the front page. It? Uh, the front page of that order has the date that the um, emergency minor guardian was appointed, and that would have been that should have been the date of the hearing itself. The June twenty second date. Okay. Well, as far as the setting it over, um, I'm not sure if we need to do that. Uh, in that, we, we will now have a signed order that says the parties are required to submit to a basically a twelve panel test within five days of June 22nd, whereas before it was it was a, an oral ruling and now it's been reduced to writing. So so Ms. Day, I know, I know that that was your request, but but as far as an signing off on that order or any concerns related to that order on emergency minor guardian, uh, do you have any objections to it other than your request for setting over? The only thing, the only request I would have um, is that there be a date certain that this be accomplished. It's now been almost a month. And so the um, validity of that test becomes suspect now that we are three and a half weeks late in getting that accomplished. 
the verbal order of the court was to have it done within five days so that myself and Ms. Winkles in the court could be assured that the child was in safe care and that um, appropriate steps were being taken to keep her safe and provide for support with her father's visitation. And so here we are almost a month later, nobody's taken a UA and contact is occurring. And I tried I to take a UA multiple times. Mr. Mr. And, Eason, any any um, any thoughts of when that can happen? Well, it sounds like um, the performance occupational health place is pretty available. It could be done on a walk-in. I think we can certainly have it done five days from today. Uh, I would think so. If we have a date, if we need a date certain, um, we could do uh, today's the twenty July twenty fifth. I think that's a Tuesday. Have it done by Tuesday, and then the reports will go directly to Miss Day. Okay, Miss Carney and Mr. Birch, uh, can you get it done within five days? Y yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, me and David, like he had said, we both tried. Um, because I went to the family health center and I tried to do the same thing <clears throat> and the family health center told me exactly what, um, that it, there had to be something. So I'm glad that you guys had the occupational health. So yeah, it'll be done. Thanks. So, so that'll be the court's order that, that that's taken care of, uh, no later than five days. And then the restraining order that's proposed, does that, anybody have any objection to the restraining order? No, your honor. No, your honor. No, your honor. Okay. All right, I will sign off on, on both of those, uh, both those orders uh, with that kind of that notation as far as the five days of the test being accomplished. So I will sign off on uh, sign off on both. Any additional items, Ms. Winkles? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Esai, any additional items? No, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> okay, great. Okay. Mr. Birch, uh, Ms. Kearney, any final questions? No. No, Your Honor. Okay, great. Thanks oh, for your joining honor. us today. Appreciate everybody's assistance and help. Ms. Day, any final items on your end? No, thank you, Your Honor. I'm good. Great. Thanks. All right. That'll conclude today's matter. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. What's the next court date set out for a week? Um, I don't I, I don't think a date is set. Oh, we're just waiting on the UAs. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. Great. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right, let's next move to the Oliver matter, uh, guardianship of Pamela Pamela Oliver, 23-4172-08. Uh, there, it looks like uh, Ms. Farr is present. Uh, she's good morning. the, good morning. And we have, uh, let me ask if Christine Matthews is on the line. Christine Matthews, are you here? And Gretchen Vandenberg, are you on the line? Okay, not hearing a response. And then uh, Teresa Massey, are you on the line? And Mitchell Oliver, if you're on the line, please state your name. I see Ms. Vandenberg on the Zoom, but she's muted. Oh, there she, she sent a text uh, via Zoom where she says, my mic won't work. Um, Ms. Vandenberg, are you... Uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Zoom and this may be repetitive or redundant, but... Uh, there should be an, an an icon on your phone or your device that you can press and will unmute, but it sounds like you may already be aware of that. So um, another option to consider, Ms. Vandenberg. Okay. Another option to consider is simply using calling into the Zoom with a phone number. Oh, looks like you're unmuted there, and now you're connecting to audio, so we'll hold tight for a second. Okay, so now I show that you're connected and now you're muted uh, on Ms. Vandenberg's uh, box on the screen. So Ms. Vandenberg, why don't, why don't I, we give you just a, a moment to, to work on that and, and call in via the phone. So it sounds like you're pretty savvy with the thing. So we'll just wait just a second and allow you to call in and we'll see if we see a pop up.
Okay, so Ms. Vandenberg and Ms. Farr, I, I think what I'll, I'll just pivot for a second and see if uh, Ms. Vandenberg is able to call in on the line. Uh, and when I see her pop up in the participant list, we can all return to this case. Okay, thank you. Thanks. All right, next let's move to the guardianship of Jaden Vratny. Causes number is 2342508. Uh, there, uh, Ms. Farr is present as the, the guardian ad litem. Uh, and we have Michaela Kaywood. Are you on the line today, Michaela Kaywood? I'm her mother. Okay, pardon me. Tell, tell me your name. My name's Heather Kaywood. Okay, okay. And, and you're the mother of Michaela Kaywood. Yes, yeah, so and she's passed. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, and so we're here today for a motion for uh, show cause. And it looks like uh, last time we were here was on the 6th of July, uh, which extended the uh, order, of, uh, the immediate emergency matter guardianship and set it to today and related to proof of service. So in looking at the, um, the case file, I didn't see that service was effectuated on, uh, on the father. Mm -hmm. Any updates there, Ms. Farr? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. So I received the proof of service yesterday. I've talked with him several times. He is incarcerated um, and he uh, acknowledged that he received the documents. He's going to sign the consent um, and get that back to us this week. So we just need to set this out, uh, I think, to be safe, the 20 days for his service, okay. uh, even if we received the consent prior to that. So if we, um, that would put us at August, August 10th, that would put us. Yes, your honor. Days. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Farr. M Ms. Kaywood, any, yes. any questions or input? No. So we're just basically waiting on his response, Sherry, that you, we, mm -hmm. for him. We have to wait 20 days from the day he was served okay. to give him the proper amount of time to respond. Yes. Okay, did he portray to you that he would go ahead and just sign, or do you think it's going to be a wait? Well, I can talk to you later. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll call and talk to you about that afterwards. Okay. Um, and, Your Honor, we would probably be entering final orders that day. On that date also. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, that, that seems like a reasonable approach. If the, there's service and there's an indication that there's a potential to consent or waive, uh, then we can set it to that 21st day. Um, and if we have that, all that information in place, then we could uh, probably move forward with finalization. So we'll set it over to August 10th. August 10th is a Thursday. That'll be at 1030 in the morning. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, possibly uh, finalizing the case at that time. Okay. You do Thank, you. Thank you very much. Hmm. The clerk indicated that there's also a need uh, to extend the, the immediate emergency order for an additional period of time until the, the next court date, which is that August 10th date. Um, so let me pull it up here. Yes, thank you for <laughs> remembering that. Okay, so this is on, let's see, let me just pull it up here. The fraught me matter. And okay, so that's the order. I'm just taking a note here so I can share that order. This is Gretchen Vandenberg. Can you hear me now? I can, Ms. Vanderberg. Uh, we're finishing up one case and we're, right. we'll re quickly return to your case here in just a moment. Thank you. Okay, so I will make sure that that extended uh, immediate re restraining order is, is inputted into the system today, and then we'll see everybody on the 10th, pardon me, August 10th. See everybody then. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's go back to the Vanden. Uh, the Pamela Oliver matter, 2341720. So, Ms. Vandenberg, it sounds like I, you can hear us now, and, and yeah. I could hear you coming through. So Perfect. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened, but I just restarted and it worked. So, thank you for your patience. Yeah, yeah that's great. Thanks for making the, the pivot. All right. So, join us. We still have Ms. Farr is present. And let me get back to my notes. 
All right. And so uh, Ms. Farr was appointed as, as guardian ad litem recently, and this involves a case coming from Alaska and potential uh, successor guardians. Um, and okay, there I can see Ms. Ms. Vandenberg uh, coming through clear with your photo. Appreciate that, or your camera. So um, Ms. Farr, do, do you want to just lead out and uh, just give a kind of just status update where we're at? Yes, Your Honor. So um, initially there was a petition to change the guardianship to appoint successor guardians that was filed, but we didn't have the transfer completed yet. And so um, there was a new order put in place so that I could help them with that transfer. We have, uh, there was a provisional order already signed by Alaska. <laughs> and so I helped them get the um petition to get the, the provisional acceptance, the order from our court. So, and Ms. Uh, Vandenberg brought the, the um, motion in and filed it yesterday and tried to get an order, or maybe it was the day before, but she tried to get an order to you to sign for that provisional acceptance. And the clerk, she said the clerk would not provide it to you. So I guess we need to set this over. And she said that I guess the clerk told her that she had that the petition had to be scanned in before we could get the order, which I don't know if that's hmm. procedurally correct or not. But yeah. regardless, we didn't get the order to you. So Ms. Vandenberg has the original order to be signed. She could drop it off to you ex parte if you would um, sign it that way. Yes, thumbs up. Perfect. <laughs> so would I just Perfect. go to the courthouse and ask them to give it to you, Judge? Yeah, yeah. generally the way that works is you present yourself at the clerk's office and say, uh, please uh, provide this to Judge Evans via ex parte. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. And so then that, that proposed order that uh, Ms. Vandenberg will be dropping off today mm -hmm. is the provisional acceptance order. Correct. So then that goes back to Alaska for Alaska to then issue the permanent transfer. Then we have to have Washington accept the permanent transfer. Then we can go forward with the successor guardian. <laughs> Lots so of it's, it's a complicated process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ms. Farr, I appreciate your, your, your assistance and Ms. Vandenberg, thanks for your legwork and making all that happen. Do, do you have any questions, Ms. Vandenberg? What kind of the next I don't. Are... And, and Sherry has been wonderful. I have to tell you, I mean, we, there was not a lawyer in town that would take this case. And so I was doing it on my own. So having her be assigned was a gift, quite honestly. Yeah. So I will make sure that I get the order over to the clerk's office and tell them exactly what you told me. I tried to tell them just to give, but they wouldn't give it to you because it was, they didn't have the other, they didn't have the the other in. And so without that being in, there was no reason to give you the order. Sure, yeah, appreciate your efforts. Thank you, thanks okay. for being willing to come back again today and drop that off, that's great. So um, so then with that in place, assuming that that order is signed, dropped off today and signed and that's put into place, uh, then there's some interstate uh, activity that needs to occur and then, a, once that's, do we just wait until that's completed before it's noted up or do we set a date with kind of a perspective of having that completed and maybe making an estimate when that will be? I think we should probably set another date and we'll okay. do the best we can to make sure that that date is met to get the next step finished. So I would say two weeks. Two weeks? Ms. Vanderberg, go ahead. Uh, that would be my guess. Okay. Uh, Ms. Vanderberg, does you, the, the you... guardian in Alaska? Sorry, Your Honor. The no, guardian please. in Alaska has been very cooperative through emails and phone calls and getting the. Um, I guess the hang up would be how long it takes her to get the court in Alaska to sign the permanent order. So, but right. I still think we should keep this on track. Okay. I believe if we give her a deadline, that would help. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to agree. Having deadlines really does help all of us. So why don't we set this over to August 3rd? Uh, that may be pushing it a little bit, but the, the push may may get it over to, uh, to the finish line. So let's do that. We'll set it for August 3rd at 1030. Uh, hopefully all that can be signed and taken care of and can be uh, wrapped up at that time. So thank you. Thank you both for your assistance and help. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.
Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, all right. And so, then we yes. probably need, do we, oh no, I don't, I think we do need, do we need an extension on this one? I don't, Sorry, I don't I see don't, one. I don't think we have anything in place. We don't. Correct. Yeah, there's, there's, I'm not showing any. Yeah, any we, we have purpose. a power of attorney in place. Yeah. Clerk also indicated that Sorry, Your Honor. not one in place. No, no worries. Not one in place yeah. to do an extension. Right. We have, we have, she has the power of attorney uh, in place from the current Alaska guardian. That's where we're at. So okay. thank you, Your Honor. Great. Thank you. All right. So that'll conclude the hearing for today. Then we'll see a uh, rejoin on August 3rd and we'll look forward to that, the docket, the uh, document that's coming in today and that'll get things moving along. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Let me double check. Ms. Fard, do you have additional cases that are on today? Just want to see. I believe I have one more. That's the Brunswick. Okay, let's go to that. Okay, um, so uh, the Brunswick matter, there's uh, two cost numbers, 23-4-136 and 23-4-255, both ending in 08. Uh, there, Ms. Farr is involved, and I show that we have uh, Brunswick um, is the 255 cause, which I think is the focus of today. And then Bradley Peters is here. He, Mr. Peters has been patiently waiting uh, this oh morning. So, Mr. Peters, can you hear me okay? Okay. I saw your mouth move, and I think you said yes, Your Honor, and it was just muted at the time. So just make sure that you can unmute because we had some issues with somebody. I'm I'm here, Your Honor. Thank you. Perfect. Great. Thank you. All right. Yes. And it looks like, uh, is it Cateron? Is that how you pronounce your name? Cateron? Cadron. Cadron. Thank you. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Name. That's a great Thank name. You. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, um, and then Ms. Farr is present, um, and then uh, Sh Shira Kroll, um, is she on the line today? I'm here. I got a uh, background going on on my thing. It's distracting me. It's okay. Sorry. It's no, you're fine. Okay, and then um, um, I'm Scott. going to stop the video. Is, it, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I don't, I, that's fine. Okay, so with that, um, with those introductions, um, there was an order of J July 19th of this year that transferred the child to the care and custody of Bradley Peters um, and noting him as the, the guardian. And Ms. Farr was discharged as a court visitor and, and reappointed as guardian ad litem. And uh, I think we're on today, and the parties can uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, that we're here on an order to show cause why Mr. Peters should not continue on as the guardian. I think that's why we're here. Ms. Farr? Yeah, yes, Your Honor, that's correct. And then also to dismiss the um, 136 case. Right. Okay. And the 136. Um, is there any objection to the uh, dismissing of the, what we call the 136 case? That's the, um, yeah. So, Mr. Peters, do you have any concerns related to that? I'm a little confused um, about the dismissal of guardianship. Yeah. Ms. Farr, maybe you can just provide a little background on why that, why you think that's appropriate. Yes, yes Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So uh, initially, uh, Ms. Cutberth was appointed as the, the um, immediate, uh, under the immediate order as guardian. Um, she's decided that she cannot go forward. Mr. Peters has filed a petition so that he can become the guardian. Um, and service has been made on mother under Mr. Peters filing. And so now we are looking at dismissing the first case under uh, that was filed from Ms. Cutberth um, and then continuing on with the second case where we would be appointing uh, Mr. Peters. Thanks. Okay. I understand. Perfect. Good. I, thank you, Ms. Farr, for that, that explanation. And also the, the clerk just handed me a note that that uh, another judge had already dismissed that so prior to it coming today, so that, that's already taken care of. So we're we're good there, and that may not have already oh. hit the file. I, I okay. I, I thought that we were doing that today, but I'm could be wrong. Yeah, it looks okay. like somebody, somebody got a, a jump start on that. So that 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 the one thirty six is dismissed. So that that takes care of that particular discussion. So thank you for that. Okay, and then we're on today. Um, for the related to whether Mr. Peter should continue on as the, the guardian. Um, so um, 
I'll hear from the parties uh, related to that. Maybe Ms. Farr, if you'd like to lead out, I'll hear from you first, and then Ms. Mr. Peters, and then from Ms. Kroll. Okay, Your Honor. So, and this is a matter where um, the child it has been living with uh, Mr. Peters for the better part of the last year, um, and mother is having some struggles. She's she has some drug addictions, homelessness, um, and there's currently a warrant for her arrest. And so, the child is in Mr. Peters' care, or and. Um, should remain there um, while mother um, improves her situation. And the and so for that reason, the um, emergency guardianship should be entered and Mr. Peters appointed as the emergency guardian. Okay. This is this child has some special needs, um, um, some mental health issues, and um, needs immediate. Uh, counseling and treatment and Mr. Peter siblings, they've been working together to get this child the help that the child needs. Okay, great. Uh, and then also just so you know too, because you're new on this one that uh, father is deceased. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Farr. Okay, thank you. Um, let me touch base um, with Ms. Kroll. Ms. Kroll, you heard what Ms. Farr's okay position is and what's what's what are your thoughts um my thoughts on it are that i haven't been keeping close contact with sherry i have kind of hit, hit a depression like i feel like um anything i do or say in court's been gone backwards i don't i'm having a problem making appointments and keeping them i'm not having a problem with a drug addiction as far as like what they're thinking I do smoke weed and drink every once in a while. Uh, I mean, it's like, I'm not doing good with this court thing at all. Um, it's just gone on and on. Me and Brad's relationship was completely toxic. Uh, the thought of hearing him talk after I'm done talking, my heart's like literally racing. Uh, I've had a trauma response to all this. May, April, April 7th, I got served. I think I had a court and I haven't gone very far at all with anything I need to be doing. I've had places I'm staying that didn't work out. Uh, I haven't been able to see my kids at all. There was a no contact order issued between me and Brad, which makes uh, a lot of things impossible. Um, through all this, I've lost my full-time job. I've lost a uh, Pretty much everything that I was doing is just all different. Um, I don't know how to, I have a friend who's gonna help me get a lawyer. Um, Brad, Bruno bring, being with Brad and Kadrian, uh, I need outside help. This isn't working out <clears throat> at all. And it's just, I feel like it's just digging me a deeper hole. Um, I don't. I don't even know what to say. There's, I haven't like I haven't even seen Joss in so long. My other daughter. Um, I don't feel like I'm not even saying the right stuff right now that I need to be saying that's most important. Um, I even went as far as to. Um, I don't know. I don't. Bruno's. 